Anti-people, now you've gone too far. Here's your anti-Christ superstar. Anti-people, now you've gone too far. Here's your anti-Christ superstar. The Paranormal Intercept Bus 3,689 pieces, 8 plus, retails in Canada for 80 smick smackaroos, and it's got five goddamn minifigures. Got this motherfucker for my birthday, because the, just as, obviously I knew where it wouldn't, the infernal Ninjago City come. Of course it didn't. So I got two sets for Rob and me to build on my birthday instead. I made it so that, you know, he got to pick one and I got to pick one. I picked the Paranormal Intercept bus and Rob picked the Beau Batons carriage, which we'll be reviewing tomorrow. So without further ado, even though I, I kind of wish that I was reviewing Ninjago City instead of this, we're going to be reviewing this. Um, yeah. <laughs> Jack, not exclusive, none of his parts are. I think we get this exact version in another set. Same old legs, same old torso, same old back, same old face, same old hood and hat. He's got the same old phone at that. Um, then we got Parker in the all denim. She's kind of tacky, you know? With her lavender hair and her stupid um, vanilla ice ass hat with like the bunch up at the top and like these all denim things with like the rips and then like all the pins and whatnot. It's like a unique design but it's kind of tacky, you know? Like it'd be nice if we got kind of like a denim jacket that didn't have all this shit all over it, you know? She's got even more on the back, damn it. Little scared face, little happy face, bippity boppity boo, Parker L. Jackson, you're arbitrary, hip, cool, punk girl that doesn't take any shit off any man. And then, of course, her older iteration here is JB. Now, JB this time has a weapon. Made me kind of sad. That it's all based on Diva's pistol, which is no longer exclusive because of this set. And then we've just got JB's phone just kind of secured to the side right there. And then we've got, like, one of the nice sparkly little, little cones at the end. Sparkly, trans-purple. Then we got JB, who's got one of the more interesting designs with the little Frankenstein shirt and the little belt going across there with the USB, the the partially fried um, lab coat, the ID, all that cool stuff. Some nice back printing right there. Uh, cool with the goggles and the hat and the hair combination. Then we've got like the soot face with like that kind of irritated expression. That one's really, really cute. And then this one's good too. Just a really nice big wide smile. These hidden side minifigures are, are quite nice. I appreciate the amount of effort that's gone into properly portraying them as having like, you know, personalities. Um, then we've got your two like villains of the set. Firstly, we've got this woman who's called Nana for some reason. Anyways, she's pretty generic looking. She's just got like a, you know, kind of messy pants and then like a tran uh, the jacket right there. Got a little pen, you know, what's on her torso? Is that a is that a faded blacktron symbol maybe? I do not know. Um yeah, just very standard brown girl hair. Then she's got one face with some, like, soot on it, and then the other one's just kind of, like, determined. Uh, don't worry, I'm gonna, after I show you, um, Bill, I'll, I'll do a little jump cut thing, and we'll have them with their ghost accessories. Bill right here, he's, uh, he's got a shovel. Does he have the same legs as... Yes, he does. Yeah, they've got the same legs, but it's still it's good legs with like the muck on it. It's it's nice. Um, then he's got. Come on, get your head off. He's 
got a really cool torso piece right there. I really like it with like the the opening in the vest right there with the like the crocodile design. That's that's cute or alligator dragon. Yeah. Um, then he's got like a little patch on the back, very cute. And he's got this very common sort of construction worker's face right here. I've seen some people use this face, although the one without the soot, as like Walter White. And then he's got that ginger beard right there, which I'm sure we've seen before. Uh, the set comes with an extra one, and then he's just got a white construction hat. He's definitely the best construction minifigure Lego has ever made. He seems like kind of a cool guy. I know that's not saying a lot, the coolest construction minifigure that Lego's ever made, but I, I like him. I like him a lot. He's got a, he's got a cool kind of personality. Anyways, now we're just going to do a little bit of a cut. And we're going to see them in their ghost shit. Shit. And boom, now they're ghosts. Firstly, we've got um, Nana right here. She's got the uh, hair, which is really quite cool. It's got, like, the dual molding with the, um, with the trans green and then, like, this, uh, you know, sort of ghostly greenish color. Uh, same color that she's got on the ghostly pickaxe right there. And she's got the more feminine ghost head, which I just think is conceptually very stupid that the male ghosts and female ghosts have different faces. It's just, like, weird that the, like, eyelashes? Ugh. Anyways, this is a really cool hairpiece. I like how it hangs in the face a lot. It looks very ominous with sort of like the bits floating up, so, you know, it doesn't quite obey gravity as it ought to, and then it's got like a gap in the back, you know, maybe she was like stabbed in the back of the head. Pretty neat concept. And then you got this dingus. He's got the, uh, the drill hand things going on there, and then he's got like a Davy Jones ass beard. He's got the same like white, uh, cap. Screaming ghost face, one that we've seen a lot before, yada yada, cool, good, yes. Um, and then we've got Zero here, or whatever the hell his name is, and damn it, why is the battery running out? You know what? Fuck it. Let's try to, <laughs> try to do this review before the battery runs out. Clearly, I went away this whole time, I didn't just like boop boop, like cut and fix like the heads, like I plugged in the camera like to charge up the battery, I went and I watched Desolation of Smog with my sister, I come back and now it's, and it's already drained, like did I not plug it in properly, like damn it! Anyways, the review, uh, firstly over here you've got your, you've got your ghost porta potty uh, the things that you use to make up the ghost porta potty first you got this little like caution sign thing which just kind of like sits there you got like two cones, and what you're gonna do, you're gonna be taking this, pop it on like that, boop, boop, just like this. Then you got your porta potty right here, the obvious place where the eyes flick up, and then you got, oops, the inside, you can see the teeth in there. Then you got like a little toilet paper roll and like a toilet bowl right there, which employs a um, light gray BB9E head, sort of for the toilet bowl, That's which is really cool. Um, and then, yeah, it's just blue, looks horrible from the back, and you can already tell what the disc shooter is. And so to make this into the ghost thing, you put on the legs just like that, you fold down the teeth because there's a little gap in the head right there, you fold up the eyes, and then you've got like the cutest ghost thing in the entire hidden side line. That's just freaking adorable and I love it, and then it shoots poop discs. You get two of them. It's it's stupid, it's funny, it's lighthearted, I appreciate it. This is just a funny little thing and I'm I'm so glad they added it. I think that this little porta potty monster is better than like most of the other monster integrated sets that they've made from Hidden Side. It's simple, it feels like a throw-in, but it's very creative and it's very funny. I I like this, you know? It's it's not like anything that Lego's ever done before, a freaking porta potty monster, but it, it works! It works thematically and it looks good. Cool. Then you got the actual bus. The bus is quite cool. Um, as you can see, it employs uh, a lot of yellow, <laughs> but not quite regular yellow. It's like the more orangish yellow, which I think is appropriate for a bus. Uh, as you can see, it's it's properly long and it's properly souped up with a variety of ghost fighting gear, with the uh, main color obviously being the yellow, but then the accent color sort of being like this this newer color of blue, which I think works quite nicely actually. I think it, I think it all comes together to make for what is a rather visually appealing vehicle. Um, like it's a good proper length, definitely feels weighty enough for what you're buying. Um, up 
at the front right here, as you can see, we've got the grill. It's got lots of lights on there, and then you've got like a sticker right here. Newberry High, Newberry High, GG4940, well, who knows. Got the grill, you can see the original like bus grill is under there. It'd be cool to see, I think you'd need to get two of these to like make a proper school bus, but I think someone could do it. Um, as you can see, then we've got like the big fat mirrors on the sides, which are uh, nicely characteristic, and then they've got like a horn on the front. Uh, the engine popping out and then like two stud shooters which is pretty cool and then you've got the words cool bus right here sometimes yeah I can't deny it sometimes hidden side can be a little bit cringy but whatever for a souped up cool fuck for a souped up school bus this is pretty cool um, so yeah that's that's like the front bit you got bars on this side um, got a printed piece up here you got 23 uh, right there and then you got like this door which can open up on the side quite bus proper I should say um, and then you, this part can lift off as you can see uh, yeah and then you got like your seat in there got a little little sticker console detecting ghosts I can only assume um, just a steering wheel, a seat, and then just kind of like an empty space so there could be like another person sort of standing up here, probably. Um, presumably JB drives, because I, I think the other two characters are like in high school or something. I genuinely do not know how old they are supposed to be. Um, so yeah, good, it's proper. It's a pity it doesn't connect to like the back of the bus, because you can see like in there that you've just like got two windows. It doesn't really, it's just a very contained little area. Anyways, then moving on, the uh, next area has two parts that sort of fold out um, right in there and then it's just sort of emptiness within got this gun with purple shit on it and a, and a green thing um, yeah it's just kind of that and then this one over here I don't even know what this is supposed to be another gun little caution thing it's red um, yeah nothing in there I this is probably the part the play feature I care for the least kind of reminds me of that like really old 2006 I guess that's not really old but that older 2006 um, Lego Batman set with the two-face armored car it's got a similar vibe to that but these flaps are way too big for what I think are very underwhelming weapons and then like a really ugly interior there like why would I ever fold these out and reveal that like that looks horrible uh, then you got a little seat right here with a control that is very simple presumably to control this great big ray gun here you got a little got a little terminal back here which can make it green and red I assume that has something to do with the shitty ass app that I'll never get um, got a phone on the side right there it's, it's got the blue color looks big looks souped up looks powerful I think it's proper enough got another printed part right there got a ladder hanging down right here Red wheel at the front, red wheel at the back. It's ever so slightly bigger, as you can see the tires are different. Then you've got two stickers, which sort of create the hump right there. Um, I think that looks quite proper. It also, when the thing is sitting, sort of makes the back stand up ever so slightly. So it's just a, it's a cool little thing that they added um, right there. Then you got like the windows and whatnot. You've got the big fat sort of exhaust or jets at the back. There's orange in there. Um, the other side doesn't have a ladder, but it's got the windows. Uh, uh, in grand total, you get um, eight of these window pieces with like the glass panes, which is really quite nice. This part, this one at the back, does not have the glass pane. Um, got a satellite on the back here. You've got your obligatory color wheel thing that all the hidden side sets have. Great, thank you very much. I I always need that so much. I'm never I I don't know what it is. A part of me is curious, but I'm not quite curious enough to download the app. So you know, how you access the interior of this thing is really interesting. By the way, you take this by the back and you sort of pull it out. There's no removing roof feature for this area. You just yank it out. And in there, when you actually yank out the interior, there's just sort of like the tracks that the interior goes on, and then sort of the windows that lead into the next area. So, pretty cool. I think that's quite innovative, and I think it's a really cool way to access the interior that doesn't at all disrupt the aesthetics or anything about the set. So you got the interior, which has got a lot, a, lot of, a lot of character. You've got the whole computer console back here, which has like two, like a, I think a ghost detector there, and then a Bionicle game right there, which is a pretty neat little little thing. Is Bionicle a fiction within the LEGO Universe fiction? Hmm interesting lore 
keyboard and then a mouse, which is ingeniously used by one of these one of these newer sort of one by one pieces right there, and then a brown seat, which you know, cool. Uh, over here you got a microscope, and next to that you've just got a little holder with a slap top. Open, you son of a bitch. Open. Damn it. Come on, come on. Ah, there we go. It's got ghosts. Who would have thunk? Oh, bippity boo. Yeah, then you got your little your little thing there and your little sample. And what's really cool is, I know I'm wasting battery by trying to take a minifigure and actually do stuff. When a minifigure actually sits there, their eyes line up with the microscope, which I think is a very neat and cute little thing. And then you got a bed right here and a little can of cola. Or soda. Orange soda. Fanta. Crush. Whatever the hell you want. The generic shit. Um, so yeah, that's your little interior. It's got some fun little stuff in it. I like I like that you can seat all of like your characters in here somewhere. You can put Jack on the bed, you can put Parker at the computer, and then you can put JB at the at the at the microscope. Which is really quite cool. I like it. This is a neat way to access the interior and it makes it so that it's fully playable. I don't feel like I'm reaching my fat fingers inside this bus uh, when I want to access the interior. And it just works ever so nicely. You've got that little guy right there, and then you got that little guy in there, and then bippity boppity boo, slide that in, click, mm, perfect. Uh, so yeah, that that honestly, I wish that more interiors were like that. Star Wars ship interiors, vehicle interiors like this. That's a great little thing that they did. I would even accept building interiors, you know, the, like the building isn't dollhouse style, like all sides of it are built, but then you slot out one side and you get the inside like that. That's great. I really hope other LEGO sets follow suit. So, yeah. Um, I think that in some ways the color scheme of the bus can be a little bit jarring. Um, especially with the seemingly random placement of the blue bits against the yellow. Ultimately though, aesthetically, given what they were going for, I think that it works. You know, they were obviously trying to, they're trying to do the whole, like, Ghostbusters thing where they take, like, a more sort of unconventional vehicle um, and sort of add a bunch of improvised bits and bites and whatnot to make it into, like, a ghost hunting machine, and I think it works quite nicely in that way. I think visually it's something to get used to, but I think for the theme, this is definitely one of the m more interesting sets, if not the most interesting set. This one had my eye from the very beginning. This was the first hidden side set that I ever saw, like of leaked images or whatever. And f the entire time, I was like, damn, that bus is really cool. And ultimately, now that I have it in my hands, I'm really not at all disappointed. It's very unique. There's never been a Lego set quite like it. It's It's got a lot of character. It's got spunk. It's got some cringe. But you know what? Like, ultimately, it seems to accomplish what it wants to accomplish, you know? Um, and I appreciate that. This is, this is like goofy, balls-to-the-wall sort of creativity, and I really appreciate that. I think when it came to things with like the Lego movie and the Lego Ninjago movie and the Lego Batman movie and all that whatnot, it made Lego realize that fans are willing to accept sort of odd augmentations and twists on everyday things, you know? Um, I think they saw that people were willing to accept some more zany concepts for sets, and I think they took that and they ran with it, and I think it's really working, especially with things like this. This is a very unconventional sort of set. We never would have gotten something like this in the early 2000s or like the early 2010s or something. I Compared to this, LEGO then was really playing it safe, and I really appreciate that they're able to sort of step out of the box and they're able to just sort of take risks like this. Because sure, in some ways, I would be willing to humor p anyone who says, hey man, Frank, this thing is kind of an eyesore. Yeah, but you know what? It's fun. It's enjoyable in all the ways that it ought to be enjoyable. The things that I would want a ghost hunting bus to have, this has. The things I would want a ghost hunting bus to do, this does. 
And for that, I gotta say that this this is quite nice, and I, I do appreciate it. Um... <laughs> It's, this is my favorite hidden side set, um, by a long shot so far. I haven't gotten that many, um, but I've gotten a few. And this one is definitely the most funny, the most creative, the most interesting. I think it's minifigure selections, it, it's minifigure selection isn't the greatest, but I honestly think that that doesn't even begin to matter when you've got a set that's got so much creativity and it's got clearly just so much like love put into it, you know? It's got a sense of fun. Between the bus and like this porta potty thing, it's it's just it's a really nice set. Price for peace is good, you know? Like it's it's got a lot of fun to it. Like I said, aesthetically, there's a debate to be had, I'm sure, about all that. But when it comes down to it, ultimately, I'm more than content with this. It, it, it's fun, and it's interesting, and it kind of imbues me with this sense of childlike wonder, you know? I know that if I were still a kid, and I weren't a sad 21-year-old parted from his love in the midst of a worldwide quarantine that claims lives at every turn, and as the press and politicians and scientific community in complete and total despair and is just completely draining me of all my social energy to be stuck in a house with my family. My point is that this is a nice set. I like this set. This set is good, and I think they did a good job with it. I think everything they intended to do with this set, they have done. And I think that Hidden Side is a good theme. I think the main problem with it, that will not give it half the longevity or even a quarter of the longevity of something like Ninjago is that it's a little bit too closed. It doesn't quite have um, sort of the variety potential that something like Ninjago has. Ninjago's basis is ninjas. Okay. Very simple, very open-ended. I mean, they had a whole theme where they faced off against ghosts that don't look at all dissimilar to the ones we have here. Really makes me think that it's all the same universe when you really sort of factor in the very visually congruent ghost designs. I've often thought about making a huge expose on where all, like, a huge timeline and whatnot that links all the different, like, Lego themes together. Like, the shared universe of the unlicensed stuff, you know? The... You know, like, the Lego Extended Universe. The L-E-U. Yeah. The L-E-U. Um... But, yeah. So... In the end, I like this set. I think it's fun. It's the best one that they've put out. It is the most creative. It has got the most heart put into it. I think that it is zany in all the right ways. I think that this is the best of Hidden Side, and I think it's cute, and I think that it takes just enough risks for me to appreciate it, you know? It's not something that every single LEGO fan will like, and that is what I, quite frankly, like about it. Um, so yeah, um, go get it if you haven't already. It's probably on sale. It's probably pretty cheap on Bricklink. It's a good one. It is a good one. Um, so yeah, I'll... I'm not feeling good. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>